Guys, Kaki M, and welcome back to MOMC TV. We are in series one, and this is our uh, finale, episode number six, and it's my turn to cook. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, play that in a second. So what you're going to get is me cooking a dish, followed by a segment by Chef Johari Edrus, who takes us on a tour of a fish market in Shah Alam, Kuala Lumpur. And then uh, yours truly wraps up the entire series with a visit to a night market in Jalan Alo in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, I hope you enjoy and make sure you say hello. Let us know where you're watching from and hit me up with any questions about the dish and I will answer uh, either during the session or afterwards. Okay, so let me just bring up the uh, session. If I can figure out how to do the solo layout. Why can I not do this? <laughs> okay, here we go. There you go. You just toss this through and enjoy it, particularly with pickled chili, which I don't have on hand, but give it a go. Hi, I'm Jackie M from Masters of Malaysian Cuisine and welcome to MOMC TV. In this particular episode on eclectic cuisine, I'm going to show you how I uh, basically eclecticize a popular Hakka Hawker dish from my hometown of Seremban in Malaysia. Now this dish is actually just called Hakka noodles. I don't eat pork, Hakka noodles actually usually make minced pork. So I'm going to use lamb instead which is a little bit unusual but surprisingly it works really well. And again I'm going to mix up the flavours uh, to add an eclectic touch to it just in keeping with this particular series theme. But like I said it actually turns out just perfect okay so have a look. Okay, so we're going to get started with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to saute this minced lamb with lots of oil and lots of garlic. I'm just going to turn this on. In the meantime, I've just got this pot of water that I'm just going to bring to a boil. Let's turn this on. We're going to heat up some oil first. And I said, this is going to be uh, quite rich and quite filling, I think. But uh, typically in my own culture, my Hakka background, they eat a lot of pork. So usually they would actually do a, um, uh, they would do a noodle dish with lots of pork. So I'm going to put all this garlic in. Okay, we're just going to saute it till it's aromatic. And I'm going to add, um, some fish sauce and also some thick soy sauce in this but also because I'm using lamb instead of pork because I don't eat pork I'm going to also add some cumin because I think cumin goes really well with lamb so that's kind of like reminiscent of the cumin lamb skewers that you get in the northern part of China and let me just show you the noodles I'm using so these are the kind of noodles I'm using today these are like um, wheat noodles that are a little bit floury and you just gotta cook them in boiling water for a couple of minutes take them out and then just strain them okay but of course any kind of noodles pasta would actually work quite well right so here's the lamb let's throw it in Because we're going eclectic, there, there are no fixed rules about what's allowed in this, okay? So I'm just going to experiment a little bit and figure it out as we go along. And we want lots of pepper as well. I just want to bring out like um, the flavours of the lamb, just saute it, brown it a little bit before I add the other stuff. But I've got lined up fish sauce. Thick soy sauce, otherwise known as cooking caramel, caramel masakan. It's not the same as kicap manis, okay? Kicap manis is sweet soy sauce that's different. 
Right, so let's add the pepper. Lots and lots of pepper. And you know what? I like um, Sichuan peppercorn, so I might actually just crush some and throw those in too. really kind of like uh, grew on me after I came to Australia ironically and that's because I uh, when we first came to Australia we settled in this part of Sydney that had a lot of Vietnamese immigrants so they love fish sauce and I started to like fish sauce as well so you're gonna see me use it quite a lot in my cooking and the other thing I'm gonna add Um, good old chicken powder. And we're going to add the thick soy, okay? Just give it a bit of colour. Now, how's thick soy different to sweet soy? It's thicker, darker, less sweet, basically, okay? And also um, the, 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 the sweetness in thick soy is kind of like a, it's got like a burnt sugar kind of sweetness as opposed to kicap manis that just tastes like diluted sugar, okay, like, like um, sugar syrup. Let's just taste this a little bit. Okay, now we're going to add the cumin. going to throw in the noodles flavor for the salted egg yolk to come through but it might add a layer of creaminess to this okay okay very very nice so the noodles just boiling along in the meantime okay they should be done let's just turn it off so let's take out the noodles you're going to find that with these kinds of noodles you're going to need to use them right away or otherwise they will stick together okay so what you typically find at home stalls also is that when they take the noodles out of the pot they they run it under cold water okay they give it a bit of a toss in cold water so i'm going to do that i'm going to take this over to my kitchen and just give it a quick 
toss to some cold water. Again, I'll be back in a second. Take this out. There you go. Right. And this is just, let's just turn this down a little bit. And you can toss this through some oil. I'm going to actually put some um, sesame oil through this, right? Because I love the smell of sesame oil, roasted sesame oil. And what you can do with this, like I said, let's just taste this first. Okay. And like I said, if you want to add extra richness, I actually picked this up. Don't worry about the, the packaging. I bought them in like bags, okay, here in Sydney. I found some salted egg yolk powder recently. Let's just see what that does to this. Onion, you can add some onion in here too. This up. Okay. So lots of oil. Again, the oil just helps to kind of fill up the dish a little bit. Okay. If you want, you can add some cheese to this. Okay. Look, you know what? Or you can add it in the sauce. Okay. We serve it with sliced chili, particularly chili vinegar, and just garnish it with some like spring onion and whatever. Okay, just garnish this. Super, super simple. And coriander too, you've got that. Just throw it over. Okay, here you go, Mola. All right, so this is, like I said, reminiscent of the Hakka noodles that uh, famous in my hometown of Suramban in Malaysia but usually they would make it with pork and I never ate it because I don't eat pork uh, it's just a thing with me um, so uh, but this uses lamb and also it's got the lamby like combination of cumin and Sichuan pepper and of course like I said you know if you like you can just kind of like make it a little bit richer and creamier by adding some shredded cheese or some salted egg yolk seasoning here you go enjoy Hi guys, welcome back to MOMC TV. I'm Johari Idrus, based in Kuala Lumpur. Today I'm taking you tours to the one of the market. Now this is a wet market in Shalam, one of the biggest ones. So let's see what they have to offer us. In Malaysia, we call them Basa Malam. Now, we're right in the middle of Jalan Alor, one of the more popular ones here in KL, and you need to check it out because you can pretty much get anything you want over here. 
The tough thing about coming to a night market is choosing what to eat. There are so many options, but only one of me to try them. Hello. I'll just get an oyster omelette if I can, please. Thank you. To be honest, the ingredients look quite simple, but I've tried this before and people absolutely love it. And I think a lot of it depends on the technique. So let's see how he does this. Oyster omelettes are common throughout Southeast Asia. They're quick and simple to make and packed with flavor. Every cook has their own twist on it, but essentially it's an egg and rice flour base with some chives and garlic, finished with oysters and chili sauce on the side. Okay. Yeah. On a regular night, it really depends on the night of the week, but on a regular night, he'll sell at least over 100 serves of just the oyster omelette, which is pretty impressive considering he's got a pretty extensive menu. Okay. Thank you. Now this looks fantastic. I'm going to try it. I can smell the chili. It's a bit strong. Fantastic. I'm going to sit down and enjoy this for a little while. The atmosphere is half the reason you come to a night market. The smoky air filled with the smells of spices, the glowing lanterns and the murmuring crowds are intoxicating. I absolutely love it. The best way to enjoy the experience is to go from stall to stall, trying a little bit of each thing that grabs you. Okay. Now. This is really interesting because I didn't have this when I was growing up. We had some variation of it, but it's very popular nowadays. You find these kinds of stalls, they're called lock lock stalls, okay? I get a little bit scared about what to order and how to order it, but there is a system. So you just gotta look into this a little bit. So can you explain how you cook this? This one's barbecue. This one's barbecue? Yes, okay, and, barbecue. Okay, and uh, these ones over here, you have a lot yeah, of... The steam kit. So this looks very interesting. I'm gonna try the vegetable. I just put it in the water? Yeah. Okay, just over here? Yeah. Now, knowing vegetables, this is going to cook very, very quickly. There's the peanut sauce. I want to try a bit of that. And a bit of the barbecue sauce as well. Okay, this is going to get messy. <laughs> Let's have a go. I like the barbecue sauce. Very nice flavour. I don't want to chew right into this because this is still piping hot at the moment. The spice is a little bit too spicy for me. A great way to put out the fire and finish the meal is with some dessert. And one of my favorite fruits is the durian and a particular variety, the Musang King. A lot of people want to know what durian tastes like. It's very hard for me to think of ways to describe it as someone who grew up eating it. I, I've always loved it. I guess Musang King to me is uh, taste custody, a little bit dry. And uh, if I want to think of a uh, comparison, I guess onions is probably the right word, but in a nice way though.